If you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and try to answer the question on your own first before listening on. In order to solve any sort of circuit that contains capacitors, what we need to do is successively simplify the circuit until we have just one capacitor remaining, and then we work backwards and calculate the quantities that the question is asking for. So first we're going to simplify this circuit until we have just one equivalent capacitor. And to do that, we're going to begin by combining these two capacitors here, the ones that are marked C1 and C2. Now we'll notice that those two capacitors are in parallel with one another. And in order to combine two parallel capacitors, we can simply add the values of the capacitances. So we'll go ahead and take the value of C1, which was 10 microfarads, and C2, which was 5 microfarads, and we get 15 microfarads. So that's going to be the equivalent capacitance of these two capacitors right here. What we'll do is redraw the circuit, but we'll combine these two into a single capacitor. And so here is that equivalent capacitor. Next, we will combine these two capacitors. Now these two are actually in series with one another, and to find the equivalent capacitance, we're going to use a different equation. So let's take a look at that. So when capacitors are in series, we have to use basically the same equation, except everything is now reciprocated. And so what we're going to do is fill in the value for capacitance 3, and then the value for the 15 microfarad capacitor as well, and then we'll solve for CEQ. The question states that C3 is equal to 15 microfarads, so we've plugged that in. And then, of course, for our other capacitor, we determined that its capacitance also was 15 microfarads. So if we add the two fractions on the right-hand side, we're going to get 2 over 15. And then to find the equivalent capacitance, we don't want to forget to flip both sides of the equation upside down, essentially. It's a little bit of an algebraic trick, but we end up with CEQ over 1, which is just CEQ. And that's going to equal 15 divided by 2 which is 7.5 microfarads. So that's going to be the value of the capacitance for these two capacitors. We'll go ahead and combine them in a third drawing. Now we've accomplished our first goal, which was to successively simplify the circuit until we had one equivalent capacitor. Our next move is going to be to calculate the total amount of charge that's present on this equivalent capacitor. And to do that, we use the following equation. And Q represents the charge, C is our capacitance, and V is the potential difference. Now we can go ahead and plug in the equivalent capacitance of 7.5 microfarads. And then the value of V was stated to be 100 volts. So we'll plug that in. And then when we calculate this, we get 750 microcoulombs. Notice the charge comes out in microcoulombs because we use microfarads for the capacitance. So the charge on this capacitor is going to be 750 microcoulombs. Now that we have that total charge, we're going to work our way backwards until we reach the original circuit. And as we work our way backwards, we're going to follow these two rules. So we've put these two rules down here for reference. The first one tells us that as we move backwards to a series arrangement, we're going to bring the charge with us. And then the other rule says if we move backwards to a parallel arrangement, we'll bring the volts. So we'll see how these two rules apply as we move backwards. So starting from this equivalent capacitor and working our way backwards to these two capacitors, these two are in series. And according to the first rule, if we move backwards to series, we're going to bring with us the charge. So the 750 microcoulombs will come back with us and we'll place that on both this capacitor here as well as this capacitor here. Now what we don't know on these two capacitors is the volts but we can easily calculate that going back to this equation where Q equals C times V. If we divide both sides of that equation by the capacitance C, we can see that volts is simply the charge divided by the capacitance. So for example, on this capacitor here, if we take the charge and divide by this capacitance, we're going to get the volts that are present across this capacitor. And when we do that, we get exactly 50 volts. And then over here, if we do the same thing, we're also going to get 50 volts. And so these two capacitors are now complete because we have the volts, the capacitance, and the charge. So now we're going to move backwards to the original picture. And if we look very carefully, we're going to be moving backwards from this capacitor right here to the two that it came from. Now recall it came from combining this capacitor with this capacitor. As we move backwards to a parallel arrangement, we're going to bring with us the volts. So the 50 volts that we just calculated will come back with us and be placed on both this capacitor marked C2 and this one marked C1. Also, if we move backwards from this capacitor to this one, 
we can see that it's actually the identical capacitor. They're both marked C3. So in fact, in this case, we can bring all of the numbers with us. We're going to bring the 750 microcoulombs of charge and the 50 volts of potential difference. Now for C2 and for C1, we're going to have to calculate the charge, but let's remember again that charge is just capacitance times potential difference. So if we take the capacitance and multiply by the potential difference, we have 5 times 50. That's going to give us 250 microcoulombs. And then over here, 50 times 10 will be 500 microcoulombs. We are now ready to answer the questions. Let's look at part A, which asks for the charge Q3. All we need to do now is reference our picture, and we can see that on the capacitor marked C3, the charge was 750 microcoulombs. So that's going to be the correct answer to part A. If we wish, we can convert that into coulombs by multiplying this by 10 to the minus 6. And that would give us a 7.5 times 10 to the minus 4 coulombs. So either this form of the answer or the microcoulomb form would be correct. We move on to part B, which wants the potential difference across capacitor 3, and we can see that that's just 50 volts. And then the stored energy will require us to use one of the stored energy equations for capacitors. And that equation or one of the equations we could use is 1 half times C times V squared. There's a couple other ones, but this one will do just fine. So all we have to do is plug in the capacitance of C3, which was the 15 microfarads. And we'll make sure to convert that into the standard unit of farads by doing times 10 to the minus 6. And then the potential difference was 50. And don't forget to square that value. And when we plug that in, we get 1.88 times 10 to the minus 2, and the unit of stored energy will be joules. So this is the correct answer to part C. Now parts D, E, and F are going to be pretty much the same, except we're looking at capacitor 1, because it says Q1, V1. And so the charge on capacitor 1 was the 500 microcoulombs. And again, if you want, you can multiply that by 10 to the minus 6, and that'll give you 5 times 10 to the minus 4 coulombs. So either form of the answer should be correct. For part E, we want the potential difference across capacitor 1, which was 50 volts. And then we can get the stored energy by applying the same equation, 1 half times CV squared, except we're using the values for capacitor 1. And when you work that out, you should get exactly 1.25 times 10 to the minus 2. And again, that will be in joules. So this is the correct answer to part F. We'll come over here for the rest of the question. For part G, we want the charge on capacitor 2, which was the 5 micro, excuse me, it was the 250 microcoulombs. And that can be converted by multiplying by 10 to the minus 6. That would give us 2.5 times 10 to the minus 4 coulombs. So either form of the answer will be correct for part G. For part H, we can see the potential difference on capacitor 2 is 50 volts. And then finally, for part i, we'll use the 1 half cv squared. And when we plug those in, we get 6.25 times 10 to the minus 3 joules. So that's the correct answer to part i.